Hi everybody, welcome to the video. If you are watching today, you most likely have a similar problem to what I encountered with your FE or Ford Y-Block valve train. Specifically, little to no oil coming out around your rockers when the engine is running, and maybe you, you only get oil at a higher RPM. This is a really cheap and easy thing to do to increase oil flow and kind of get the engine back to where it was. It's very simple to do, it does not cost a lot of money, and I definitely recommend it on any FE you have, regardless of how new it is or anything like that. If this hasn't been done or checked, it needs to be. And of course, what I'm talking about is the cleaning of the rocker shafts themselves. For those of you that don't know, the way these oil is oil comes up through one of the bolt holes, one of the two center ones, depending on which side of the engine this is mounted on. And it comes and it bleeds into the tube, fills the tube up, and then there's holes drilled under the rockers and it comes out those holes and oils the rockers. The problem is that essentially works as a trap for gunk and dirt that pile up in there and because there's there's hardly any pressure on this rail what it will cause is it will cause this to fill up and it can't get out around the rockers very well at least until you get to high rpms when your pressure comes up a little bit. I'm going to show you in this video how to fix it. It doesn't cost a lot of money and it doesn't take many tools either. The first tool you'll need is a decent set of pliers. You will need a block of wood or something similar and a hammer. I prefer a brass hammer. Then you're going to need a drill and a bit a quarter inch or slightly larger. And you'll need a rod. I'm using a quarter inch rod about 20 to 24 inches long. All right, so the next thing you're going to need are the dormant expansion plugs. You're going to need two of them per shaft, so four per engine. And they're dormant part number 555-007. You can usually buy them in packs of 10 for 10 or $12 a pack, so they're pretty affordable. And you will need something to drive those into your shaft with. I'm using a 932nd socket. That's just what I found that fits the best. Next, you will need some cleaning supplies. I use Brake Clean. Paper towels and some mini bore brushes also work really well. Another really handy thing to use is a bore brush about a half inch in diameter or something like that to clean out the shaft itself. But I don't have one here, so I'm going to show you how to do it without it. It does take longer. And you will also need a wire brush. I like to use some assembly lube, and you may want to use some sandpaper or something to do a little bit of the cleaning with. Alright, so the first thing you're going to need to do is remove the cotter pins on each end. Alright, once you get those done, you just take your washers and the tension springs off. Washers go on the outside, tension washers, they go on the inside towards your rocker arm. Then you want to pull your rocker arms off. I like to keep mine in the order that they came off of, but to my knowledge, it really doesn't matter that much. It's just something I like to do. Then you want to take your block of wood or something soft to, to keep from messing up the end here. And you want to start lightly tapping on this aluminum rocker stand. You do that, and I'll show you that coming up. I'm really just barely tapping this. All right, so we've got our rocker shaft cleaned down, and now's the time that you want to make sure that it is not warped before you continue on, because a lot of times these will warp if you tighten them down onto the cylinder head unevenly. It will cause it to bow and warp. So I'm gonna go ahead and check this. I'm just gonna roll it on a known flat surface and make sure that it's not warped. This one looks pretty good. Normally it will be close to the center or usually one end is kicked out and it'll be enough that you notice it. So I'm gonna go ahead and wipe this down. I'm gonna take the towel, get some of this oil off. You can see this is the bottom of your rocker shafts. It goes towards the cylinder head. You can see the holes and oil grooves cut in there to oil your rocker shafts. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and get the caps out. In order to do that, you wanna take a bit. This is a quarter inch bit. I'm trying to move the camera as little as possible because I've got grease all over my hand. All right, so you just drill a hole in the end of that sheet metal plug. You wanna take your quarter inch rod, slide it through that hole until you hit the other end, and then 
tap the opposite plug out. So it's out and you can already see the crud that's just on the end of this. All right, so now that we got one end out, we're gonna flip the shaft over, slide it to the other, and catch the, the edge of the one we drilled out, and it should come out very easily with just light tap for the brass. Now, I'm gonna try to get this one. You can see up in there, but it's gonna be kind of difficult, I imagine. This will be the time when you would go ahead and clean it with a bore brush or something if you had one, uh, maybe for a, about a 20 gauge shotgun or something. Just run it up and down in there until it's clean. But I do not have one at the moment. So I'm just gonna spray it with the brake clean. Nice spray. And I'm going to take that same rod and run a paper towel down it continuously until it's nice and clean. You can see all the junk that's on that paper towel. And I'll just keep doing that till it comes out clean. My engine looked really clean on the inside, but these were still all gummed up. So it's certainly worth checking no matter what your engine looks like if you have not replaced these already. Oh, well, you can see it now, but it is much cleaner. So now what I'm going to do is fire up the air compressor and actually use the blowdown tool to clean it. Now this is an optional step, but normally I'll come through and clean the rocker arms and the rocker pedestal mounts. And I'll just hit them with a little bit of brake clean and a wire brush. And give them all a good scrub down. Check the bearings and I'll also check for play in the rockers themselves. So I'm going to go ahead and clean all these up and we'll be back. Alright, so we're back. I've cleaned up all the rocker arms now. And the pedestal. And I'm going to go ahead and boil these out. Next thing you're going to want to do is take your rocker arm and check all the holes. So you've got one coming through the back that goes all the way into the bore of your rocker shaft and one that goes down through the push rod to all the tip of the push rod. And you want to check the inside of your bore and check for where here on your tip. Check and make sure that there is no play on your shaft when I put them back together. And this, it moves just a little bit. And I'm going to say that that's fine. Alright, so now we're going to go ahead and install these plugs. I'm just going to drop the plug in there. I'm going to take this, uh, this 9 30 second socket, put it in there, set it up on my block of wood. And I'm just going to tap it down until it seats how I want it. You'll feel it when it seats up. And there it is. But it's pretty easy to feel when it stops on that little lip. So now that we are finished with this, we're going to start putting it back together. Just remember that this little notch is on one end of the shaft, and this little notch always goes to the bottom or towards the cylinder head. All right, now that we've got this back together, there's one more thing we need to do, and that is check the bottom of your rocker pedestals. Because when you hammer these on and off, you will sometimes get little ridges like this one. I don't know if you can see, but the file actually catches on that. And if you get those, all I do to get rid of them is just very lightly hit it with a file until they're gone. 
you definitely need to make sure and get rid of these even if they are small because they can cause issues with your valve lash on these FEs with non-adjustable valve plates. These weren't too bad. Now that everything is nice and clean and deburred, these are ready to go. All right guys, so we finally got these installed back on the 390 in my Ford pickup. And uh, I just wanted to take this opportunity to thank you guys so much for watching. I know this video was a little rough around the edges, but this was my first ever YouTube video. And uh, I plan on challenging myself here in the new year to make more and more content and hopefully improve my game a little bit in the process. Last thing I'm gonna go ahead and do is close out this video with a short clip of this thing running so that you can see the oiling. Unfortunately, I didn't think to get a recording of this oiling beforehand to show how great of an improvement this was. Mine wasn't really very dirty, all things considered, but it made a huge difference nonetheless. And you can see that my engine is actually fairly clean. Uh, there's no gunk in the heads or on the valve springs or anything like that. So if your engine is having any trouble or you don't think it's oiling like it should, that's very likely the culprit. I'm going to go ahead and crank this thing up, let it get a little bit warm, and we're going to show exactly how well this thing oils now. <laughs> 